Hello and welcome to Beamer Folk. A little while ago, a 19 inch LCD TV, a bedroom TV, suddenly decided after eight years to not switch on. There was a vague clicking, periodic clicking noise, and I thought I could see the little red LED, the power on LED indicator, uh, flicking very slightly. But other than that, nothing was working. So a repair was needed. This Tesco, Tesco is a significant supermarket chain in the UK, and um, this is in principle a branded TV. The components inside, as far as I can see, are produced by Samsung, and if you look up the board numbers on a well known auction site, you'll see that it's associated with a number of um, other brands but I think that this was specifically made for Tesco's simply because I personally even though I look quite hard couldn't find identical configuration to this so I think it was made for them anyway on with the um, repair I'll end up by uh, doing a, a video of actually um, the repair itself but I'll initially just go through how I disassembled this TV and generally checked it out for um, what was wrong with it. OK, first of all, there's no need to undo these three screws and there's no need to undo those four screws. Other than that, the screws around the periphery of the set need to be undone, including the two screws here one of which obviously I've managed to lose. I'll go on to the next slide. OK, here you can see I levered off the front fascia panel. Uh, you have to sort of put your nails and separate it. It doesn't, it doesn't just fall away. It sort of clicks away. And of course, you would need to undo this connector here with the white plug here. And that co that connects to a printed circuit board with the LED and um, infrared. OK, I move on to the next slide. And here you can see the contents. Uh, you, you've got the um, DVD player here for a 19 inch. Actually, it was quite nice to have the DVD player. And you've of course got the main board here and the power supply board with um, the switches at the top here. Well, let me talk about the connectors to the LCD front panel. That's the white connector to go, that went to the fascia. You've got a red connector here that goes through to the inverter board. And on the LCD panel, there is a black plug. And that black plug goes to this plug here. In fact, that was a socket. This is a plug. Um, it's worth marking them with a felt tip so that you get the orientation correct. And also this particular connector can actually be displaced. So you want to make sure that the pins completely line up with the sockets. Oh, and it's quite obvious to the eye that this is um, where I did a repair. I need to mention that actually I repaired this unit about a month ago and I've been keeping this on soap tests just to see whether there was anything else wrong with it. So that's my disclosure here. I'll move on to the next slide. And here's the back of the front panel. And you can see that you've got a black, that black connector here with a white dot at the end, which polarizes the um, plug and socket. There was also a earth lead that connects to the screw very close to this socket. And the red plug went to the inverter board plug here. What we do now is go on to the video how, how I actually repaired this. Of course, once I got this opened, the first thing I did, which I would recommend, is have a good look over the circuit, particularly the, um, the power supply board and look for those 
dreaded capacitors that may have bowed out, expanded at the end, indicating they're at the end of their life and they're not doing the job that they should be doing. And lo and behold, the first thing I noticed, I didn't at this point in time measure any of the voltages around here. I just saw immediately that there were two capacitors, one there and one there, that were showing signs of failure. And so I thought, well, the first thing I do is replace those and see whether that helped. Now, I'll zoom in on that area and um, show you the capacitors themselves. Well, you can see now that I've zoomed into the area of the power supply board that I could see something was wrong. And what I've um, done here, I've placed the original, some two original capacitors on the heat sink so you can see the effect of the bulging out of the capacitor on this one here and this one here. And these two capacitors were in that position there and there. They are 470 microfarads each at 25 volts and they were wired on the board in parallel. There is sometimes, let me remove those capacitors because I've just placed them there. Uh, there are sometimes good reasons why you parallel capacitors, one of which is to reduce the ESR, the equivalent series resistance. The, I'm not sure that that was the case here. The designer obviously felt that, that those capacitors were fitting for this board, but the position was just awful. There are three ways in which heat disperses. One is radiation, the other one is conduction and the other one is convection. Well, as the power supply board was mounted vertically here and as this heat sink um, is at around 55, 60 degrees C, quite hot, you were getting lots of convection currents flowing from, as it were, from south to north, vertically upwards. And any capacitors above this heat sink in close proximity are vulnerable. One needs to bear in mind that the whole of this set is about eight to ten years old. We've had this for eight years. So what, what do I expect? After that period of time, something's going to go wrong. And I didn't really, I don't really expect... Uh, very high quality, say, aerospace capacitors to be fitted in a product like this. And so I, I, after this period of time, I do really expect something to be going wrong with it. And uh, I considered myself lucky that it was just this that was the problem. So what I did, I replaced those two capacitors with a 1000 microfarad capacitor across here. But what I actually did was to remove it from this area here. I moved it upwards and backwards. Had the original design and fitted these two capacitors and possibly that one, although that one is not showing any signs of problems, if he had actually fitted, he or she, actually fitted these capacitors under the board, then there wouldn't have been a problem. But as as they were fitted where they were, this is a serious issue. What he could have done is fitted the capacitors to one side of the heat sink, then the convection currents wouldn't be baking these two capacitors. But anyway, so I fitted this capacitor upwards and backwards, put a cable tie with a little bit of cushioning material through a hole. I didn't have to drill a hole. There's a natural sort of hole in the plastic chassis at the back here so I was able to thread a table a cable tie through it and tighten it just to a certain extent you don't want to over tighten that because you could squeeze the electrolytic capacitor too much and cause damage so it's just holding it there with a little bit of cushioning material uh, in between the chassis and the capacitor and quite frankly that solved the problem you can see the little 19 inch Tesco television seems to be working nicely. It's been on soak test for the last six hours and it's displaying my own video clip.
and um, the model number for the television set is a X19 forward slash 45 E for Edward hyphen GB hyphen TCD UP hyphen UK. I hope that's been of interest to you. This is Beamer signing out for now.